Hello everyone, Silent here and welcome back to another episode of Truly Bedrock Season 1. Today we're going to be going on a massive journey to the Far Lands in the Bedrock Edition of Minecraft. We need to travel tens of millions, possibly up to 30 million blocks out in the world to actually reach the different kinds of Far Lands on the Bedrock Edition. And honestly, it's gonna be quite the journey and quite the experience. The Far Lands are always very, very fascinating. And it's not too often that you actually get to travel out there in survival mode. So hopefully you guys do enjoy the adventure. So the reason why I wanna to go to the Far Lands today in this episode is because the mechanic we're gonna be using to actually get out there is going to be removed in the next update. And the next update is coming out very, very very soon of course we can't choose what version we play on when it comes to bedrock edition we have to play the most recent release which has its pros and its cons so yeah we kind of got to do this before we can never do it again and that's why I'm kind of prioritizing this little adventure over finishing our mini game that we started in the previous episode and by the way thank you all very much for your amazing feedback on this project We'll get back to this mini game and make it look actually somewhat decent and fully completed sometime in the next couple of episodes. But as for today, we are going to go ahead and go to the Far Lands. Before we can get out there, we have a fair bit of preparation we need to do. So here we are back at the Savannah Village that we're using as our temporary base. And I have gathered a few materials in our Ender Chest. I've cleared out the entire rest of our normal stuff from the Ender Chest. Don't really want to lose any of this or have it be in the way. So we're just going to be taking the contents of this right here. Some bottles, a fishing rod, and we also want a couple of boats as well. You'll see what those are for once we get out there. But we're also going to need some kelp to actually eat, of course. Some totems, some ender pearls, some slow falling potions. Because in the far lands you kind of like, you know, f fall through the world, so... Kind of don't want to do that. <laughs> we also got some rockets. And the final thing that we need to get is some obsidian. I'm actually fresh out of obsidian because we crafted up ourselves a stack of beacons. So I got to go over to the end dimension real quick. Mine down some of those obsidian pillars. So right now I'm on the main end island and like there's a shulker bullet. And that is just giving me all kinds of false hope because I spent about six hours, yeah, six hours trying to get a shulker to this main end island. And wow, that thing's very persistent. Uh, and I didn't get a single shulker back here. Every single shulker that I tried to get back here completely died. And it was sad and terrible. And, you know, somehow a shulker bullet got over here. And now it's levitating an enderman because that's a thing, apparently. Jeez. Anyway, I thought I'd share with you my extreme disappointment. Is that guy gonna fall down? No. Oh, he did and he died. Oh, well, okay. Well, that's fine. You know what? Six hours? That, that was totally worth it. All of the obsidian has now been gathered. We're only gonna need a couple of stacks to make some portals going out there, but I also went ahead and gathered up just a little bit more. You can never really have too much obsidian, especially when you have all of these wither skeleton skulls. Anyway, so now what we need to do is we need to actually switch out our armor and gear because, of course, we're going to the Far Lands. This is definitely going to be a one-way ticket, so we don't want to lose our nice, you know, sentimental renamed gear. And then I have basically just a bunch of other really random, like, you know... In iron gear, a bunch of backup diamond gear. So I'm just gonna pick through this stuff and get myself a kind of janky elytra. So the thing that we're gonna be using to get to the far lands in today's episode is gonna be called kelporting or kelp teleporting or whatever you really wanna call it. Basically, we're gonna be using a little bit of a bug or a glitch going through a nether portal to teleport us to the incorrect place in the nether. And the thing that you need to know about the nether is that the Nether is technically eight times smaller than the overworld. And yes, I'm aware the overworld is infinite, technically, and the Nether is also infinite. But one thing for you to wrap your head around is that there are different sizes of infinity. Yeah, that's right, different sizes of infinity. 
just like, yeah, it's, it's a thing. Don't worry about it. Science is weird. <laughs> So basically this bug or this glitch allows us to teleport to the incorrect place in the nether by going through a nether portal in a certain way, which is a little bit strange. Uh, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and build a nether portal right on this block at negative 400, negative 400. When we go through this in a certain way, that is going to take us to the coordinates of 3200 in the nether. Yes, I had to use a calculator for that, and yes, you are free to openly judge me as much as you want. And there we go, hunger has been acquired. So all we need to do is we need to finish eating right as we get teleported by this nether portal, and this should teleport us to the coordinates of negative 400, negative 400 in the nether. So if we go ahead and go through here, I'm gonna start eating right about now. Again, we need to finish eating right as we go through the portal. That one might have worked. No, okay, that one was actually a failure. And this one linked to a portal that I know of. Okay, cool. So we need to go back through here, go back to the overworld, and try that again. Take number 5,607. Eat as soon as we get into the nether portal, and we should finish eating right as we teleport. We burped right as we got teleported, and generating terrain for a little bit longer. That is good. And hopefully this time, we'll be at exactly negative 400, negative 400 in the nether. I think it definitely worked, but I might be kind of just stuck in unloaded chunks. Okay, so I just decided to go ahead and, you know, close Minecraft rejoin. I joined midair and fell, that's fine. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, we are now at the coordinates of negative 400 and negative 400. Sure, we could have just flown here. That would have probably saved us a little bit of time and probably been like a little bit simpler. Uh, but anyway, all we need to do now is make another nether portal right here on this block. And then when we go through this, we should actually be at the proper coordinates of 3200 and 3200 in the overworld. And then from there, we can go to 3200, 3200 in the nether. And because the overworld is eight times the size of the actual nether, then we'll be good to go. Hey, pig man friend, what you doing out here? Jeez, you're gonna be left out here forever. Let's get you back to the nether. Or maybe, maybe you just wanna take a nice little, like, a nice little bath out here. I don't know what you're doing. You seem like you're having a good time, though. We're just gonna leave that guy there. Anyway, we are ready to go for the next tel teleporting, teleporting adventure. Eat as much as you can. Oh, by the way, the reason why we're eating kelp is because it's the quickest thing to eat and also it gives you very little saturation and stuff. So that is kind of like the best food source for this. And also that was a complete success, which I'm pretty happy about. Don't need to re-record anything. And as you can see, we're now at the coordinates of approximately 3200, 3200 in the nether. Poor guy, oof. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so when we go from this part of the nether to the overworld, we'll actually be at around 25,000 blocks out, which is pretty cool. So yeah, as you can see with this method, there is a lot of nether portal building, a lot of kelp eating and a lot of just getting disoriented from going from one infinite dimension to another. Uh, so that one failed, unfortunately, but yeah, as you can see, it does take a little bit of trial and error. Oh wait, hold on, I just got confused. You're only supposed to eat going from the overworld to the nether, that way your coordinates break, and then you can go eight times further. We were just in the nether and we ate going to the overworld, so we just got sent back a place. <laughs> we should have been sent to 25,000 or so, and not 3,200, dang it. So now I gotta do one more kelp porting, and then give back to the nether, then go through the nether portal again properly. Oh man, this is this is too complex for my brain, jeez. And here we are, finally, negative 25,000 blocks in the overworld. No idea why we're in a cave. We're also at Y72, are we in like a mountain or something? <laughs> that's, uh, that's fairly strange. I've seen nether portals put you down in caves before, but like, I wasn't really expecting to be at Y70. We must be in a very, very tall mountain because I'm already digging up to like Y100. Oh, there we go, finally the top. <laughs> Yeah, we're in a very tall mountain and geez Minecraft get your head out of the gutter. Uh, yeah, look at that That's actually a pretty cool ravine over there. But yeah, look at that We could have you know ended up in that ravine I would have been fine with that and not like in the middle of a weird tunnel and cave system That goes all the way down to like lava level. That's pretty awesome Actually, let's go ahead and take a little flight around this area because that is kind of a really awesome mountain range to end up in Hmm, I like it this is actually pretty cool. When you go exploring to these really far out areas in the world, you never know what you're gonna find. 
but generally, you find something fairly interesting, like a double ravine inside of this mountain. That one goes down even further, it looks like. This is such a cool area. Fire is just like not catching me on fire out here. Like I'm just like standing in here for extensive periods of time and it's just not catching me on fire. Is the game seriously already breaking? We're only negative 25,000 blocks out. Like I should be able to be caught on fire. Shouldn't I? I'm just not getting caught on fire. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how fire is supposed to work. You're supposed to get caught on fire from that. That's, that's weird. But anyway, I have myself a little bit of hunger now. Now I need to regenerate some health because of all my fire experiments. And when we go through this portal, again, we should be at around 25,000 blocks in the nether. And finally, we'll be making some actual headway on getting to the far lands. And I think we did it that time. It sounds like we're suffocating. Uh, that's not good. I'm actually gonna close the game because I know for a fact that we're gonna be on that generating terrain screen for like a while. So let's start up the game again. I'll log back into the realm and hopefully we don't die from suffocation because that would be kind of a terrible fate. And you really want me to change my skin even though you defaulted my skin to that one? This game, this game likes to get under my skin sometimes. Okay, logging in now, as you can see, we are definitely suffocating in some blocks. Uh, we're literally just like in a mountain. So that's cool, I guess. <laughs> also, the totem of undying was not on our offhand for some reason. So that's a thing that got taken off at some point. Not sure what's up with that. Uh, so yeah, we just need to clear out a little bit of area for our nether portal I would like to actually take a look around this area see where we are at see the sights, you know See what's going on. Hello ghast very laggy and also not very good at killing me, but hello Looking back at the footage it actually appeared that I used up my totem of undying So that is a pretty good thing as you can see I didn't bring these along for no reason wasn't quite planning on using that suffocating in the wall, but whatever. And also, for those of you that are like, Oh, you're not getting to the far lands in this video. You're only 25,000 blocks out. We'll just wait until we go through this portal, Mr. Commentator. Because like, or commenter, I guess. Because now, we're gonna be at around 204,680 blocks in the overworld. And if we ever build the terrain, I can actually prove that to you. Yeah, look at that. 204,678. Not too shabby, and nothing in the world should really be too broken out here. Uh, looking around, it doesn't seem like we got any stuttering, any movement issues, so that's a good thing. The chunks are generating a little bit slowly, but that is to be expected. We are playing on a realm with other people at the moment. Okay, I take that back actually. Stuff out here is getting a little bit stuttery. As you can see, just by looking at the edge of this nether portal, things are starting to shake back and forth and back and forth. I'm not sure how well that's gonna show up on the video, but yeah, that's definitely very, very shaky. So even a couple million, or sorry, just a couple hundred thousand blocks out, this is kind of, I would say it's kind of unplayable because like you do a lot of crouching and moving in this game and this would definitely drive you kind of nuts seeing everything shake all the time. It's kind of disorientating and even the particles are kind of shaky too. Like everything's just kind of breaking down, kind of stuttering. So when people tell you the Minecraft world is infinite, uh, yeah, you got less than 200,000 blocks to play with before uh, things start going a little bit haywire. All right, so one more trip through the teleporting, kelp-porting nether portal, and we should again end up at around many, many blocks out there. I'm taking more suffocation damage. That is terrible. I know I'm going to use another totem, so, ah oh man, this is such a slow process. <laughs> I don't really want to suffocate in a wall, and also sorry for the black screen. I have to kind of close the game because the generating terrain, it takes way too long and sometimes you'll just get stuck on that screen for minutes even though you can't play or move you're still technically like in the game taking damage dying I'm probably gonna use another totem uh, let me switch over and just start spamming nine yeah there we go uh yeah uh hi <laughs> see I barely survived that one I already used one totem I was down to two hearts cheese Oh, stop putting me in walls game. I just want to like not be put inside of walls <laughs> I'm not really a fan of like suffocating in blocks uh, But yeah, as you can see we did succeed as you can see we're negative 204,000 blocks in the nether And I just want to see if there's anything really around here besides lava Okay, I probably do prefer being put in the massive lava lake instead of being put inside of a wall 
Like, at least with the totems, they give you fire resistance. So you'll be totally fine in a lava lake compared to inside of a wall where you can just like definitely die. Also, you can see the little bit of shakiness is happening even out here. And from what I've been told, this is because Minecraft is starting to break down and it's having a hard time actually calculating the precise movements of the player. And so instead of moving like, you know, 0 0.000111 of a block, you are instead moving like 0.1 of a block. So it's much less fine and that makes everything look way more jittery. Uh, that's what I've been told anyway. I am probably completely butchering the explanation of why, you know, everything is super jittery. And here goes nothing. Hoping for the best. Hopefully we don't get put out in another wall. Uh, but as far as I'm aware, this one should generate another portal, I think. I don't know. I've already done this like six times. I forget everything that's supposed to happen because, man, it's kind of a rocky road doing this little adventure. And there we go. As you can see, we are 1.637 million blocks out or 1,637,411. Not too shabby for just eating a little bit of kelp, going through some nether portals and using some totems of undying. And wow, this is, uh, <laughs> this is a little bit weird. As you can see, the game is starting to break down even more. And wow, I'm sorry, chicken. You just look, ah, that's strange. That's actually hurting my eyes. <laughs> Sorry for anyone watching the video. Oh man, that's that's painful actually. Oh man, I'm, I'm actually crying <laughs> Walking on a diagonal is not fun. Uh, can we actually get up into the air? Uh, that's gonna be a little bit more smooth. Yeah, there we go. Not too shabby not too shabby in the slightest. So yeah, as you can see, when you're flying, it's not too bad. Walking on the ground, however, is where it gets to be quite, uh, quite terrible, especially with like all the trees and just different edges to see shaking around. This isn't the worst that it gets, but this is pretty, pretty bad. It's not too shabby right here, but when you turn around and you got the trees and stuff real close to you, oof. Yeah, that's kind of, <laughs> not a fan of that. Let's get back in the nether portal and let's get out to the proper far lands. We only need one more kelpertation in order to actually get out there. The truly bedrock moon is just as broken as ever out here. So I guess nothing has really changed, has it? Anyway, final kelp porting that we should really need. We should get into the nether. Hopefully we're not suffocating in another wall. If we are, that's just gonna be the worst. We're suffocating in another wall. Oh my God, this game seriously hates me. Ah. Okay, let's load up this realm. I'm gonna start spamming nine because I know my Tunnel of Undying is in the final hot bar slot. And of course, nine selects that slot. There we go, I'm holding this guy and I should be able to dig that out. There we go. <laughs> this game seriously hates me. That's three times in a row we've ended up in a wall. That's really... That's just the worst. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had that bad of luck in a row. That's ridiculous. Anyway, luckily we have these totems. Without these things, we would be dead like, oh, I don't know, four times over at this point. Mostly because I'm already an undead, like zombie big man. Uh, so, oh, hi. Look at that. Oh, I guess we could have ended up in lava. That would have been nice too. Would have been fine with that. Would have been a little bit more interesting. A little bit more variety to our totem usage. I can't actually jump up this block. Oh yeah, that's right. The far lands really breaks once you get out this far. So if you want to get up on a block, you gotta like run jump. So just like there's different levels of infinity, there are different levels of the far lands on the bedrock edition of Minecraft. So if you're a fan of the bug rock of the week series, you you might recognize this actual bug from the first ever episode of bug rock of the week. Really happy that it's finally being fixed, you know, like 11 months later. But also, we did an episode where we went to the Far Lands as well, and with that one, we went out past about 32 million blocks, which is, of course, you know, very, very far. It's really difficult to get out that far, um, it's even with, like, you know, just creative and everything. And fun fact for you, in that video, we went, we actually went out further than you can teleport or use commands. The game actually thinks that you're outside the world, so that was kind of fun. Didn't figure that out until after I published the video. Uh, but anyway, long story short, 
that video has different far lands from what we're going to in this video we went out to the very very far lands 32 million blocks so with this one we're going to be going to 13 million and this one is actually going to have like a full bedrock floor and all structures however there's not going to be any land at all and for this one you want to uh, have some slow falling so that when you go through this portal you can actually get into the air and fly so yeah as you can see we're going to be falling through blocks uh, we won't be able to stand on anything, however, oh, that's the best one. That is absolutely the best one. Pure luck right there. Uh, we'll be able to see all of these structures all around the world, and all of these guys are going to have insane looking stuff. And yeah, as you can see, there is nothing out here at all besides just like ocean. We get the bedrock floor, we get unupdated obsidian down at the bottom, or unupdated uh, lava lakes actually, so a bunch of lava touching water, and of course we get a bunch of these different structures that generate going all the way down to the floor. So Minecraft still remembers, oh yeah, this guy, he needs to be touching the floor, but uh, it doesn't remember that like, oh yeah, we're in the far lands, we probably shouldn't be generating structures. <laughs> so if we look around, we might also be able to figure out and find a a whole bunch of different fossils as well. I've explored this area significantly in creative for that bug rock episode and I always saw so many fossils. It doesn't look like we're really seeing any right now. Oh wait, hold on a second. That kind of looks like a ruins. That right there, you might just barely be able to make it out. Oh, it's something. It might be a shipwreck. Not really sure. Uh, I don't really want to touch the water. I know we're just going to fall straight through it, but I'm not sure if our elytra is going to deactivate. So this is probably about as far as we are going to reach in this video. However, there is actually some really fun and interesting stuff out here. First of all, we are able to place a boat and then we'll stop falling through the world. Oh, but the boat's not going to move. Oh, well, that's kind of breaking the entire point of me bringing a boat. Yeah, the Far Lands, the Far Lands isn't too nice. However, you know what? It's still fun. <laughs> so the great thing about boats is they stop you actually falling through the world because the boat itself is not falling through the world, so that's nice. And also you can stand on top of it for some reason, so that's also a nice little development. Uh, of course, we can't really stand on anything else out here because like reasons? Did we fall down a little bit? It feels like we might have. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, we're not really going to fall through the world, which is nice. Uh, at this point in the world, actually around, I think it's like 8 million blocks onwards, you start falling through blocks and that makes it extremely hard to actually travel in survival mode. Uh, so you really have to use some form of, you know, cheekiness to get out this far in the world. Now, one thing I do want to do is I would like to actually pick up this boat and then I think we'll be able to swim. Uh, oh, we're not going to be able to move. Okay, so you have to fly. Ah, oh, man. Okay, well, can I... <laughs> uh, oh, hi, Frostwalker boots. That's right. I put those things on. I wanted to see what those did. Uh, nothing helpful. Nothing helpful at all. Also, I'm on top of bubble columns right now. Ah, oh, man. <laughs> uh, this could actually be the demise of us. Let's get off those Frostwalker boots. I was hoping those might do something for us, but they're not. Uh, basically, we need to get back in the air. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck here forever. There we go. That wasn't too difficult. Okay, so I had a goal in mind, and that goal was to get some of the gold blocks from that ocean monument. Uh, but that's clearly not really going to happen if we can't move. Also, wow, I just have, like, a lot of momentum. Okay, that's fine. I can I can live with that, I think. Hi, there's an Elder Guardian. <laughs> you know what? We might be able to actually kill that Elder Guardian and get a sponge from the Far Lands. That would be fine. I really want to do something with this monument. Uh, it might be very difficult, especially because we have so much random momentum. It just keeps on going. Like, I I've stopped. But now it's probably going to keep going a little. Yeah, okay. Hmm, strange. So the good thing is, is that nothing else can move either. So I guess that's fairly helpful. Uh, you know, it's kind of terrible that I personally can't move. But hey, you know what? The world doesn't revolve around me. So uh, I need to figure out some way of doing this. I basically need to get to that center room. Uh, I guess I don't need to technically mine any blocks since I can just kind of fall through them. And then that'll be fine. So if I can place down another boat, that wasn't nearly as as far away as I wanted it to be. I'm not sure if items will float or if they'll actually fall. So let's throw down an item. That didn't actually move anywhere either. And it looks like items will actually float. Okay, cool. So we can break that boat. I can try and pick that up. Oh, it's going to be the block further out. 
I might have to wait for that to float back up to the surface, then try and pick it up. <laughs> I only have three boats. I can't really make any more. So I have to kind of conserve resources to the maximum. Ah! <laughs> anyway, I can slightly inch my way forwards using these boats. Uh, I just have to kind of place them down in front of me, and then I guess I can break them underneath me. Uh, you know what? That's a surprisingly valid strategy of travel, actually. Not too shabby. Not too shabby in the slightest. Uh, so break that, boom, cool beans. And hopefully, once I get over to here, I can actually place down an ender chest. Let's get one block further. Of course, I won't be able to stand on the ender chest or anything, but I should be able to open it. Oh, that one's too far out of my reach. Okay, well, that's not perfect. Uh, let's hop in this guy and then get down an ender chest out here. And sweet, I actually can open that. That's amazing. You know, while you're out here, you may as well do a little bit of fishing as well. That's kind of why I brought the fishing rod. You never know what you'll get, like a super ugly puffer fish or possibly something that might actually be useful. So the thing is, I'm actually catching like a lot of stuff. However, it's falling down through into the monument and then I'm guessing it's floating back up. So I actually have to go down there in order to get like literally any of it. Uh, but while I'm out here, I would like to also get a little bit of Far Lands water. As you guys know, this stuff is absolutely premium, impossible to get, extremely valuable, and it makes all of your potions it taste like prismarine. So we're gonna go ahead and put just a few bits of that into our ender chest, and then we'll have a few bits to sell for like a stack of diamond blocks each. Because, you know, no one else is ever gonna come out here and get some Far Lands water. I would like to get more, but sadly, I just do not got the space for it. It doesn't look like we're really gonna suffocate from those blocks. Hi, you're a guy, we're just gonna go down further and oh we don't have any of our fishies i gathered so many fish from our little fishing session oh hi there's actually a pillar right here so we can see through the unrendered sides of the blocks and also we should be able to go down pretty far oh hi there's the fishies they all ended up way down here <laughs> this looks so scary uh one thing i really hate about games or just really any form of media is uh oh hi we can't actually swim up uh, is when you have just infinite voids of like water that is just the worst where you just can't see where you're going at all but you know that there's just like infinite water it's the worst like look at that that's just scary that scares me to my foundations <laughs> uh not actually sure how we're gonna get out of this by the way because like i only have uh like five boats or six boats and also we're kind of drowning uh, oh, hi, apparently we're getting air at some point, so that's fine. Helmet, helmet has, oh, it has respiration too. That was unplanned for, but cool. It doesn't think that we're suffocating these blocks, that's fine. So, hmm, somehow we're not actually under where we came in. I don't know how to solve this issue, uh, but I think we should be able to place a boat right there. Hi, now we're in this guy. Oh, this is even worse than infinite water. <laughs> uh, but now we're up a layer, okay. Okay, uh, so we might be able to abuse this. Or now we can just swim upwards. Okay. That was, that was terrifying. I can't tell you how much that's actually terrifying. <laughs> infinite oceans and infinite blackness. Two of my least favorite things in the world. So one thing I've discovered about myself over the couple of years that I've been doing YouTube is whenever I get extremely panicked or scared, I just keep saying things and I just keep talking. I don't stop talking. And that's how you can uh, get really long videos, and that's why I've been talking so much recently. <laughs> Ever since we've gotten to the Far Lands, I have not shut up a single time. Uh, but now you know why. Oh, please don't fall down. Thank you. I really, 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 really want that sponge. So let's go up a couple blocks. We killed that guy successfully. Place a boat right there, hop into the boat, jump out of it, break it, and now we can go over by a couple blocks. I really like boats. Hey, I got that sponge. Excellent. And a piece of prismarine. I can sell these for so many diamonds. That's gonna be cool. So that right there is the actual front of the Ocean Monument, of course. As far as I'm aware, the gold rooms of the Ocean Monuments always generate on the back somewhere. So we need to go ahead and make our way towards the back of this. And then I really want to get a gold block. Hopefully we don't have too many issues with that. And here we are. We should be above the actual back side of the Ocean Monument now. And I don't think there's going to be any pillars underneath us. Hopefully that guy doesn't shoot at us. And where exactly are we going to end up? We're going to end up in... Oh, actually went a little bit too far. And you just completely fell through the ceiling. And now you just went further down. Hello, Phantom Menace. <laughs> okay, so I got to go diagonal that way a couple blocks. And then I have to do this very, very carefully. And I don't actually have mining fatigue. Can I? 
Oh, I can actually break these blocks. The particles are all the way over there to the left side. Now I have mining fatigue. Thanks, game. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not gonna happen. Okay, so we gotta go that way diagonal. Okay, here goes nothing. This might be our demise, but it looks like we're actually right above this thing. Okay, that's kind of perfect. Uh, the only way we're gonna be able to do this properly is if we just kind of float midair and it just kind of gently tap a jump every now and again. Of course, I have mining fatigue. Uh, this is gonna be the worst thing ever. I don't have any TNT or any other faster ways of breaking this. And of course, we're also swimming right now, so that's gonna make things a lot slower too. I might actually be out here for genuinely a very long time. I've already been out here for like 30 minutes because like the walking is, you know, not a thing. Oh man. Oh, this is gonna be painful. Oh, I'm also drowning. Okay. <laughs> uh, I also am remembering that, uh, oh, that's a problem. Um, hmm. Yeah, I was remembering that I didn't have to break blocks and then like, hmm, now I'm underneath here. Crap. So this is what it's like inside of a box that has gold blocks in it. <laughs> it's super dark, I hate this. Also, I'm not actually dying, so like, I might just be able to mine this for a minute and uh, if things do go wrong, I, I might be okay. I might be, but also I'm not sure how to actually get out of this situation because if I jump out, I'll be standing on the boat and I won't be able to break the boat. So I'm just gonna mine. I'm just gonna sit here for a while. I have no idea what I'm doing, but ah, this is terrible. This is so bad. Oh my God, I finally broke something. I have no idea what it was. And also I think it splashed downwards, but I think I think that was just a prismarine block. Oh, that took a couple minutes. Oh, there it is. <laughs> It took a couple minutes for me to get that. Oh, that's terrible. Can I at least start mining that block? I can. Okay, I just really, really want one of these gold blocks. It's gonna take a couple minutes, but like, it is a possibility. This one is actually infinitely less painful because I can actually see the progress of it being mined. With the other one, I just had to have faith that it was ever going to break. But this one, you can at least see the, the progress of the breaking mines. This, this is very weird. I don't even know what to say about this, but hello, you are now inside the head of a zombie pigman soilet wasper. One thing that makes this even slower is that I have no efficiency on this pickaxe and also I'm sitting in a boat. Whenever you're sitting in a boat, you actually mine slower by default anyway, so this is like basically the slowest it can be. Hey, there it goes, finally, oh my god. Ow, oh, my hands are cramping from that. I think that took like three or four minutes of continuous mining. Ow, my hands, but there we go. I think that was definitely worth it, nine gold probably still got that faster than we would have otherwise. <laughs> and hi, oh, look at that. That's kind of cool looking. It doesn't look like there's even any water out there. Huh, I haven't even like bothered to turn around this entire time. Uh, so now we actually have the problem of not being able to particularly get out of here because of course we can't move from in between these four blocks. So I think what I need to do is I need to uh, stand here, break that. Okay, good, I can break that. And then we need to place a bow out there and then Okay, hmm, that didn't quite place where I wanted it to. I need to place that like over there. Oh, it's only gonna place above my head. Well, that sucks. Um, huh. Cr hmm. Crap. <laughs> so I've tried about everything I can think to actually get out of this little micro prison. And the only thing I can think of is to activate my elytra in this little air hole right here and then maybe pop a rocket, but like, it's gonna be very hard to even look anywhere where you can pop a rocket. I can't place a boat anywhere because it just places inside my head because excellent game design. Jeez, I just wanna like place it literally anywhere not inside my head. And then I want it literally be trapped in the far lands. Uh, going down below is not something I wanna do. Nope, worst place in the game. Um, the only other option I have Hear me out, I need to actually mine two blocks above me, and this is actually gonna be a lot faster because I'm not sitting in a boat, but if I mine this gold block and then the dark prismarine above it, then we should have some water like flow down in here and then I should be able to swim up. So our other gold block is literally right there, just out of reach, and it's infuriating. Uh, but I did mine my way all the way up to here, so we should be able to go up. Yes, we can, <laughs> okay, thank you. Oh, uh, that's the worst. I, I did not enjoy any of that. 
that. But we did get ourselves a gold block and dark prismarine. I'd really like to get our other gold block that's just like right here. Uh, not sure if I'll be able to place down that boat, hop in there. Uh, absolutely nothing but void. Um, so that's cool. I can't even go down anymore. Well, that's not fun. I guess that gold block is just, oh, we actually, we, we picked it up. Never mind. Not gonna complain anymore. Uh, we can't pick up you. That's fine. Don't really care about some dark prismarine. <laughs> Let's get out of there. That was actually terrifying and actually terrible. And oh my God, we can't even go to the far lands without escaping like a wandering trader. Literally, in the far lands. Can't even escape. There's a drowned over there with a trident just stuck in his swimming animation, and I find that incredibly funny. Those guys are evil, and he deserves nothing less than an internal prison being stuck right there swimming. He's actually going for the wandering trader right now, which is also a drowned. <laughs> oh, that's great. I, I love everything about this situation right here. Oh, sweet. I got myself a far lands fishing or a far lands lily pad. That's amazing. I don't have any emeralds, but I think I can manage to kill this wandering trader because you know what? Even out in the far lands, you can't give up the good fight of trying to get rid of these guys. Like, I mean, for real, they are just persistent pests and they're kind of ridiculous. Also, I've discovered the way of bridging using boats. And look at that, we got ourselves some leather and some leads, even more unique Far Lands items. So it turns out if you start fishing like super far away, all the items actually come directly into your inventory, which is fairly convenient, but also a little bit odd. If you fish close to you, the items just like stay on the block where they originated. There's so many weird and unique things to be discovered about the Far Lands, and I think it deserves more research. So I put down a sign, but there's a typo at the very end, and that's because the, the plus sign is the, the key that I used to start recording. Um, and I have the mining fatigue, so I'm literally never gonna be able to break that sign. Fire spreads is of course off, so there's just gonna be a sign out here forever saying that the Far Lands have met the silence and it's gonna have a random plus sign on it. It makes it look all weird, but you know what? That's just like the most typical thing I think I've ever done. <laughs> anyway, now that's officially daytime again, we can go ahead and pack up and try and find another structure or two. And of course the chunks aren't loading out here, so. <laughs> oh, that's so typical. I can't use a rocket. Um, oh God, no, 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 no. No, this is the worst. Okay. <laughs> of all the things. Of all the things. Oh no, this is the worst possible fate. <laughs> I placed down a boat, but I, uh, I can't get into it. Uh, I know if I re-log, this is going to be the end of it. I only went like a hundred blocks. The monument is just like right over there. This is the worst thing ever. My luck today is just like on par with how it should be. Oh, this is terrible. This is just terrible. Let me fly. Oh, there we go. Okay, stuff loaded in. Okay, I think we're fine. <laughs> oh, that, that actually was painful. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't think chunks are really gonna load over here too much, and I think I'm probably slowly but surely killing the truly bedrock realm. Like, I had to talk Foxy and all the other members into allowing me to do this on the real realm, and, uh, I think this is what they were afraid of. I know the Far Lands is safe because I did it in that Bog Rock video, but, like, this is the kind of thing that makes it not safe. <laughs> anyway, the monument should be over here. Oh no, it's an unloaded chunks. Okay, now that's loading again. Cool. So I think that's probably gonna have to unfortunately do it for our Far Lands adventure. If the chunks are deciding to not load, then well, there's just not really too much you can do about that one, sadly. Uh, can I just get over the center, get into the boat? Get into the boat, there we go. Overall though, not too shabby. We got out 13,992,008, no wait, 13,992,008 how do you read that again? Uh, 13 million, 99,208 blocks out. Not too shabby for a single episode of Minecraft Vanilla Let's Play, right? Not too shabby, not too shabby in the slightest. Uh, but anyway, what we're gonna do now is just kind of go ahead and break this boat, and we're just gonna swim down here and get a whole bunch of screenshots of our nice cursed monument 
because like what else are you gonna do this is going to be the end of our far lands journey you can actually see one of the elder guardians over there and the actual unloaded chunks so we're just gonna keep on swimming down here and we'll see what we see we got some of our boats over there they died in the bubble columns and yeah this is a very fascinating place isn't it and one thing I really want to do is I actually want to update some of this lava and the way that we can do that is all we need to do is just like click on it with a flint and steel and we might be able to do that can we hop in one of these boats actually oh we're actually gonna drown and also no I can't hop in one of those boats really is drowning gonna be the way that we end this <laughs> it might very well be the way that that we end this <laughs> Jeez, that's kind of ridiculous. There's nowhere to breathe down here. Uh, I do have a couple of totems, but these things don't give you water breathing for some reason. So we're just gonna see how this goes. Yeah, I will just use a few of these. And of course, oh man, this game just wants to make everything difficult for me today. If we go in here, we're not gonna get air either. Uh, but wow, that looks fairly fascinating, doesn't it? I kind of want this stuff to turn into like obsidian because it looks really, really cool. And you don't get to see that that often. Anyway, let's go ahead and die again, use another one of our totems. I really just want this stuff to update. There we go. Now it's all turned into obsidian. That was kind of cool-ish. I wish it did more or like wasn't such a pain. <laughs> Anyway, that is pretty much the end of our Far Lands journey. We are drowning. We have only a couple more totems that we can use, but it has been a pretty fun adventure. Thank you all so much for coming on this adventure with me in today's video. I hope you have enjoyed. Uh, it's not going to end yet because we need to fall into the void and just immediately die. That's cool. Let's go ahead and respawn. And I think I'm actually going to have to re-log in order for the world to load around us. And there we go, we are now officially back at world spawn. There's an ender chest over here, and yes, we have all of our things from the Far Lands. We got a fairly significant amount of stuff, I will say. So now that we have an entire ender chest full of weird and quirky objects from the Far Lands, we can go ahead and study those things in our cursed laboratory of doom down here underneath the Savannah Village. As you can see, we already have many, many cursed objects and blocks in here already. We have a ton of weird and strange quirky mobs that we've gathered in here as well since the last time you guys saw it. And we also need to make a new wing of this laboratory just so that we can actually study the weird and strange items we have gathered from the far lands who knows what knowledge we will unlock from studying these guys but i know it's going to be strange we might be able to abuse it for like superpowers or something weird and I don't know, it's just going to be a really fun time. So that is a bunch of different content for future episodes. However, thank you all so much for watching this episode. I hope you have enjoyed. It's not very often you get to go on to a journey to the Far Lands in Vanilla Survival. It basically never happens. So thank you all so much for coming on this journey with me today. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, of course, leave a like on the video as it helps out the video and the channel significantly. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe as well so you don't miss more adventures in the future and i'll see you all down in the comment section and in the next one and then there was silence